Good morning and welcome to Sunday Square Off. I'm Bram Resnick. On today's show, a Valley woman shares her very American story full of struggle and survival. Dr. Wanda Tucker's family traces their roots to the first slave ship bearing Africans to these shores 400 years ago, to the British colony of Virginia in August of 1619. The story of slavery is older than America itself, but today it is being told through new eyes and voices. It is no small matter. Many of us grew up being told that you're not anyone. We are somebody. We are. We are descendants of Isabel and Anthony and William, and who took on the surname Tucker, who arrived in 1619. Through the grace of God, we'll continue to survive um, what we're going through today. 400 year connection. It's my family's story, but it's also the story of millions of Americans, African Americans here in the U.S. The way we think about slavery and its impact on America is being challenged on this 400th anniversary. We'll hear more about that from our guests, the head of the West Valley NAACP and a prominent Valley pastor. But we start with mm. Dr. Wanda Tucker, whose quest to discover her roots took her all the way to the African nation of Angola. Wanda Tucker is faculty chair of psychology, philosophy, and religious studies at Rio Salado College in Tempe. Dr. Tucker, welcome to Square Off. Thank you for having uh, me. That is quite a story. Help our viewers and take us back to your origins in 1619, 1619 and what your family has kind of figured out. Okay. In 1619, uh, the first generation of my family arrived here in Britain, British colony. And Isabel and Antony, and somewhere around 1624, 1625, we don't have the actual date of his birth, but William Tucker, their son, was born and baptized. And that's recorded in the 1624, 1625 census. Okay, so you have that. And, yes. and so this origin story has been passed along for generations yes. in your family. When did you first hear about it? We first began to hear about it in the 1970s. Our cousin Thelma Williams and Gladys Pegram, her our other cousin, was doing the research based on the oral histories of their grandmother. And so they were looking for evidence to cooperate with the oral history. And they began to tell the stories with the family. And this was uh, a slave ship yes. from Africa. Yes. Bearing, and what did you know about that ship? We didn't know the name of it at first. We just knew we were descendants of Isabel, Antony, and their son, William. So it was a little later as the historians began to conduct more research that we learned the name of the ship, the San Juan Batista that left Luanda, Angola. Okay, so folks might ask, this was 400 sure. years ago. There are not many documents. Sure. I don't know if there are any DNA tests, although I think one may have been done sure. in your family. How do you know for certain that this William Tucker was your direct ancestor? We can trace our lineage back to the early 1800s, and the rest is based on oral history. So it's been passed along, yes. but there's a large number of Tuckers out there in the Virginia area yes. and around the country that this is, this is the story. Yes. And so growing up, what did you know about your family and your roots? Well, I knew very little. I uh, knew about the cemetery, but it didn't resonate until much year, many years later because I had gone to the cemetery, which was in the neighborhood that I grew up in. In Hampton, Virginia. In Hampton, the Virginia. The Tucker Family Cemetery yes. there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you, you went there, and what did, what did you see there? What did you feel there? It was a cemetery, and that's where my uncles were buried and my great-grandmother. But we didn't put together, or I didn't put together, the largest story until much many years later in, in 1990s when I was attending a seminary in Richmond, Virginia. I went into a bookstore and looked at the book by Lerone Bennett, Before the Mayflower, and I was scanning it, and I saw Isabel Antony and their child William documented in there, and I said, that's my family. And that was because of the stories that I'd heard through the years, but did not in understand the context at the time. So how did that change your understanding of yourself when you heard that story? I felt very proud to know that I could trace my family lineage back to someone else beyond my grandparents that I grew up with and 
family members. And, and yet it caused me to be very curious, you know, what did they go through through those years? How did it begin? And so my cousin laid the foundation that allowed me to step in years later. Was it more than curiosity? Was there some pain associated with this, this discovery, knowing your ancestors were not, didn't come here by choice? Yes. You were forced yes. to come here. How, how did you feel about that initially? Very angry, and, um, but confused, you know, because there were so many missing gaps. And so angry about the institution of slavery, of racism, and how we were treated because of the color of our skin. Now, you would go to Angola. That was this yes. year? Yes. Well, the 400th anniversary. You would go to Angola. Tell us about the decision, how and why you decided, I'm going there, I have to see where they came from. USA Today had been interviewing my family and I for a number of months. And um, after the interviews, I continued to do research. And they um, approached me and said, would you be interested in going to Angola? And my re first response was yes, because of my interest and curiosity and learning more about my family. And so it was a no brainer at that point. A no brainer. Was yes. there any anxiety about oh, yes. going? You, I don't know how, what kind of, how much you've traveled in your lifetime. Yes, but what, so what was the anxiety? It, it was more going to the homeland of my ancestors. I had traveled to Cameroon a number of years before. So going to Africa was not uh, unsettling in any way. But going to the home of my ancestors was. Okay. And this is where the story gets very powerful yes. uh, in your telling of it. And when we come back, we'll hear more on that Wanda Tucker's journey back to Angola and the path she just could not go down. 